Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here, your source for gaming tech emulation and open source news. Let's get started. All right, we'll kick things off talking about PlayStation 4 emulation with PS Off, and we'll preface this by the GitHub saying, in development, does it run? No. Anyways, there are some things to point out here. The first thing is that version 0.4 beta just dropped. This is for Windows, and I'll drop a link to it in the description below. Secondly, there is a second GitHub called PS Off GUI. And in the description, it says it is a simple GUI for the PS Off PlayStation 4 emulator. You can run files simply by drag and drop, and it will run the emulator. And you've probably already guessed, but there's a recent release for this one as well, version 0.1. And thirdly, Brutal Sam already has a YouTube video up showing how to set this emulator up and booting Sonic Mania. I'll drop a link to this video in the description below and I do recommend checking it out. We've talked about PS Off before, and this is another PS4 emulator in the growing list of PS4 emulators like Shad PS4, RPCSX, Obliteration, FPPS4, and even more. Now with all of that being said, at this point in time there is no PS4 emulator out there that's going to run anything like Bloodborne, and it's probably going to be a while before any of them do. I'm curious to see which one ends up taking the lead here. Next up, we're quickly talking about custom Nintendo Switch firmware. And if you remember a little while back, Nintendo released version 18.0.0 of their Switch firmware. And it appears Atmosphere, which is custom Nintendo Switch firmware, has just released a brand new version as well. So at the time of filming, Atmosphere version 1.7.0 is the latest release. And they're calling this one the 78th official release. It is worth pointing out that this is classified as a pre-release, so there still may be some bugs and issues with it. So in this version, basic support was added for Switch firmware version 18.0.0. They say the console should boot and atmosphere should be fully functional. However, not all modules have been fully updated to reflect the latest changes. So while this is just a pre-release, it appears there is now an option for switches running firmware 18.0.0. But moving on, and next up we're talking about Mezen. And for those who may be unaware, Mezen is a multi-system emulator for the NES, SNES, Game Boy, PC Engine, Sega Master System, and Game Gear and they've just added in a brand new system. And that system is the Game Boy Advance. It's pretty awesome to see that being added into Mezen. Now, judging by the activity on the GitHub, it still seems that things are being worked through for Game Boy Advance emulation, and it's probably not gonna be perfect right out of the box. Anyways, Mezen is available for Windows, Mac, and Linux, and I'll drop a link to the GitHub in the description below. It's free and open source. And speaking about open source, next up we're talking about Linux, and if you are using Linux, you may want to pay attention to this. There's been a major security vulnerability found in XSED Utils. So at a very high level, it appears that this security issue could enable unauthorized remote access. And there's a statement by the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency specifically in regards to XZ Utils version 5.6.0 and 5.6.1. Now the recommended remedy is pretty simple. They say to downgrade XZ Utils to an uncompromised version, such as version 5.4.6 stable and they specifically call out Fedora 41 and Rawhide users. Now my advice here is even if you aren't using Fedora 41 or Rawhide, just double check your XSED utils and see what version you're using. There's no harm in doing that. And speaking about security updates, next up we're talking about GameCube and Wii emulation with Dolphin. And if you are using Dolphin from the Google Play Store as opposed to directly from their website, you may wanna make sure this app is updated. The Dolphin team has issued an urgent update. They say this is an ahead of schedule release to fix a security vulnerability. We will make a new release with the next Dolphin progress report as scheduled, and the report will include the details of this fix as well as all the notable changes in this release and the next. Moving on, and we're still talking about security updates, and this time about PS2 emulator PCSX2, which just got a brand new security update. This update, as you may have guessed, is in direct relation to the XZ Utils security vulnerability. 
and they've replaced it now with 7-zip LZMA SDK. This does seem to be a fairly preventative measure, as they say it's freeing us from a backdoor that likely wouldn't have affected us anyway, since it was in the build system which we did not use. This change is effective as of PCSX2 version 1.7.5658. But moving on from security stuff, and next up we're talking about NES emulation with Nestopia, sometimes called Nestopia UE for Undead Edition and Nestopia just got a brand new update. At the time of filming, version 1.52.1 .1 is the latest update. There's a whole bunch of bug fixes as well as new palettes for Highness as well as FBX. Moving on, and we're talking about PlayStation 3 emulation with RPCS3, and RPCS3 has yet another update. We've been talking about this one quite a bit lately. So one of the latest updates is for save states, and we've got some user experience fixes. They say here that RPCS3 will now tell the user to wait for game saving operation to end. And there's also a fix for a save state reload functionality from the home menu. This may not seem like much, but the RPCS3 team has done a lot of work to save states lately. They've decreased the size of them. They've improved the loading speed of them. They've introduced a progress bar, and now we've got this. Next up, we're quickly talking about Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance emulation on the GameCube with Visual Boy Advance GX. And Visual Boy Advance GX just got a nice small new release. So version 2.4.8 is the latest update, and on top of some fixes, they've added in a new feature. If you press L, R, and start on the GameCube controller, it'll bring you back to the menu. Next up, we're talking about Time Splitters Rewind, which is a multiplayer only remake of the original games in Unreal Engine on PC. They recently put out a video on YouTube, I'll drop a link to it in the description below, and they appear to be asking for help for development of this game. If you are curious about the project and wanted to learn more, check out their description and also the relevant links. Next up, we're talking about Libretro. Kind of. And for those who may not be aware, Libretro is the team behind RetroArch. And they said, while not Libretro related, a Libretro member released a Dark Souls 3 mod today that significantly enhances the visuals among some other things. So it's called Dark Souls 3 Infinite Detail. It's available on Nexus Mods and I'll drop a link to it in the description below. They say it eliminates texture LOD pop-in and greatly increases draw distance. Improved graphical effects courtesy of DS3's Yebis middleware. Improved tone mapping. Fixes removes 10-15 to 15 second hard-coded fog gate in Firelink Shrine and more. Next up, we're talking about PSP HDC 2024. For those who may not be aware, it stands for Subscribe to Mr. Sujano or PSP Homebrew Developer Conference depending on how you want to interpret that. And this year's Homebrew Developer Conference is happening in just a few days. If you are curious about this one and wanted to learn more about it, I'll drop a link to their YouTube announcement in the description below and I do recommend checking it out. In their description, they've also got a link to their Discord server. The PSP HDC will be occurring on April 6th at 6pm UTC or 2pm EST. And speaking about PlayStation, next up we're talking about PlayStation. And it appears that the PS2 was a better seller than we thought. So on an official PlayStation podcast, Jim Ryan said that the PlayStation 2 sold 160 million units worldwide. I'll drop a link to the podcast in the description below. The previous number of sold units for PlayStation 2 was thought to be a little over 155 million. And if we take a look at the charts over on Wikipedia, Nintendo Switch is sitting at 139.36 million there's a very good chance that the Switch overtakes the PS2 as the best-selling console of all time. Yes, there's a lot more gamers now than there were back in the PS2 era, but at the same time here, do these extra 5 million or so units make a big difference in the grand scheme of things? In that same podcast, Jim Ryan said the PS5 is well on track to be Sony's most successful console ever. And I'm not sure if that means financially or numbers sold. I mean, as of December 2023, PlayStation 5 has been reported to have sold 50 million units. That's a far cry from 160 million units. It's going to take them probably quite a while to get there. Now, the PS5 has been out for about four years. And interestingly, in that same podcast, 
Jim Ryan says the number of games they published so far on the PlayStation 5 at this point in the cycle way exceeds anything they've ever done before. So let me know your thoughts about all of this in the comments below. Do you think the Nintendo Switch is going to overtake the PS2 in terms of the best-selling console of all time? And do you think the PS5 is going to overtake the PS2, or is that wishful thinking? And speaking about wishful thinking, this is kind of crazy, and I don't know if it's going to be successful. But apparently a group of modders are trying to port GTA 5 to the Nintendo Switch, Linux, and Android, thanks to the source code leak from December. I'll drop a link to this tweet in the description below and feel free to check it out. It appears that GTA 5 is booting on a Switch. And speaking about source code and game development, next up we're talking about game development on the Game Boy Advance, and this is really impressive. This is the 3D Sage game engine which is currently in development, and it looks absolutely fantastic. I'll drop a link to this video in the description below. The developer of this says the next version will have the grid and UI, so you can create your own custom levels like they showcased in the video. I'm very curious to see if any games get created with this and how they turn out. But anyways, that is all I've got for you in this one. Straight to the point, all stuff and no fluff. We talked about a bunch today. Let me know your thoughts about absolutely any of it in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button. Check out my other videos. Don't tempt fate. Save your state.